The other day, my kid asked me who invented the car. So I looked on the internet, and the internet says Carl Benz in 1885. Yeah, that Benz. But there's this thing from 1863, which seems pretty carish. So I looked some more, and it seems like the real answer is there's lots of people working on something similar in the 1800s, but we give Benz credit because his thing resembles most what we call a car today, and also he became famous for it. Of course, I said all that and my kid fell asleep. Similarly, the answer as to who invented the light bulb, telephone, or steam engine would actually be equally complex. Innovation, discovery, it's messy, it's a spider web, it's not a straight line. But often, whoever has the best story gets the accolades. Observing this, statistician Steven Stigler said, no scientific discovery is named after its original discoverer. Examples abound. Our brains crave simple narratives, so credit accrues to the popularizer or the prestigious. To prove his point, Stigler named his idea Stigler's Law and then revealed he didn't discover it. The idea originated with sociologist Robert K. Merton. But this is just the beginning. Come with me on a Stigler's Law journey. So, the Merton idea that inspired Sigler was about how fame snowballs, how early success leads to more recognition, even if not deserved. It reminded Merton of a Bible verse from the book of Matthew. And so he calls it the Matthew effect. Now it should be noted though, that the book of Matthew was not written by Matthew. And that this idea, the Matthew effect is even older we can date it all the way back to John Stuart Mill, who himself was the product of the Matthew effect. His father, James Mill, believed strongly in early education, giving John Stuart Mill many advantages. And by his early 20s, Mill is writing a system of logic. In it, he says science is a collective effort and warns against individual attribution. This is the idea that is close to Stigler's law. But there's another concept in this book that would later gain popularity. That is the idea of a black swan, the name for an event that seems impossible but later becomes a reality. Named that because Europeans thought black swans didn't exist until they were found in Australia. Now the term black swan is not associated with Mill, rather it's associated with Nassim Taleb, who wrote a book of the same name. Now in that book, he profiles a hedge fund called Long-Term Capital Management. This hedge fund was neither long-term, it lasted four years, nor did it manage capital well, losing five billion in a matter of weeks and requiring a private bailout. What went wrong? Well, the hedge fund was using a Nobel Prize winning model, but the model assumed stable volatility. And in 1998, Russia defaulted on its debt, setting off a chain reaction, creating hyper volatility. An event that the model assumed was impossible a black swan. Now the name of the model is Black Shoals, named not for the black swan, but for its inventors, Fisher Black and Myron Shoals. Myron Shoals was a founder at long-term capital management with another economist. That other economist was not Fisher Black. Fisher Black had sadly passed away, but not before writing a paper called Holes in the Black Shoals. The paper pointed out the black swan problem just as John Stuart Mill had done centuries earlier. So who was this mystery other economist that founded the ill-fated hedge fund with Shoals? Well, he was the third inventor of the Black Shoals model, but he originally didn't get naming credit. His name, Robert C. Merton named for his father, Robert K. Burton, which is where we all started. Now, maybe you're sitting there thinking, what's the point? This video is a mess. That's the point. Science is a mess. It's complex. It's collective. Simple narratives and just so stories are often lies or half truths. I mean, here we have a bunch of legendary scientists with things named after them that either they didn't invent or they didn't invent by themselves. And at the center of our web is John Stuart Mill, product of the Matthew effect, developer of 
Stigler's Law, and the concept of the Black Swan, foreseer of the issues of the Black Shoals model. And yet, there's no law or theory named after John Stuart Mill. Before anybody yells at me in the comments, yes, I know there's one thing named after John Stuart Mill, Mill's methods. What I say about clean narratives being a lie. Do you have more examples of Stigler's Law? Let me know in the comments. And please check out some more Econ Nerds videos.